Welcome to uh, Math 107 lesson on the probability written assignment. This is just to help you kind of think about the ideas that are going to be presented in this uh, in the assignment. So these are similar type of problems. Okay. In uh, t from 2017 to 2019, it tells us that there was an average pop uh, an average of approximately 300,000 U.S. tourists each year who traveled to Russia. And the U.S. population for that time was approximately 328 million. So it asks, what is the probability that a random U.S. citizen traveled as a tourist to Russia last year? So that would have been in the 2019. So this was an average of 300,000 per year. So we would guess in 319, we could estimate that about uh, in 2019, there were about 300,000 tourists from the United States out of 328 million. There's a total, um, the probability that you're a U.S. citizen, random citizen, is out of 328 million. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, we'd say there are 300,000 out of 328 million. Let's do some reducing there. <laughs> a couple of zeros there, a couple of zeros there. So it ends up being 3 out of 3, 2, 8, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0. So this is the uh, population. Now, if we want to round that off, we could go ahead and, uh, now of course, this is already rounded off um, because 300,000 is an estimate. And so. But this gives me, on my calculator, it shows me 9.14634, a bunch of numbers, and it has an E and a negative 4. Now, what that means is that that negative 4 means, this E negative 4 means times 10 to the negative 4th power. So that means we're going to move the decimal point this way four places to the left, right? So that's going to give us approximately... Uh, zero point now four we already have the nine is one place so we need one two three more zeros and then a nine one four six and it would go on for quite a ways probably maybe to infinity anyway um this uh we we might say that's approximately i think in uh the book it often wants one or two you know two sig oops i missed a zero there uh uh, two or maybe three significant figures, maybe a five there. So uh, that would be the decimal version instead of the the fractions easier. I just put in the fraction. Okay, so it's fairly simple. Now, what's the probability that you traveled to Russia as a tourist last year? Now, if I'm answering this question, me personally, I know that I did not travel to Russia last year as a tourist. So I am not a random, see, look at the difference between the questions. The random citizen could be anybody. But, but if you're picking just me, I did not go to Russia. The probability I went to Russia is zero. I did not go to Russia. Now, if you, if you're asking this question of one of you, if you as a student, if you did happen to go to Russia last year as a tourist, then you would have to say one, one, or write a hundred percent because you went. So the answers to this pretty much should be either zero if you did not go or one if you did. Okay. Now let's look at the next question. It says, estimate the probability the random U.S. citizen will travel to Russia as a tourist in 2025. Well, we don't have enough information to know how many people will travel to Russia in 2025. All we know is that in three years in a row, 2017, 2018, 2019, the average was about 300,000. Is that going to change much? Well, it could. There's political differences and variations, and uh, so it probably won't be the same, but it does say to estimate it. So, with the information I have, my best guess, my best guess with 
the information given is 300,000 out of uh, 318 million, right? 328 million out of 328 million. So again, approximately 0. 0.00009, I think that was 15, wasn't it? 915, same thing. What do we use a lot of times to estimate the probability of something in the future is just the information we have from what has happened in the past. Now, there may be other factors that could change that, and as time gets closer to 2025, we might change our estimate, but that's the best we could do with what information we have. And now this question comes up, what is the probability that you will travel to Russia in 2025? Well, again, if you're asking me, I have no plans of going to Russia in 2025. The probability that I will go to Russia is pretty darn close to zero. <laughs> If that's for me answering it, pretty darn close to zero. In fact, I would probably just put in zero. Now, if you have hopes, if any of if you've got an idea and you'd like to go to Russia, I mean, that would be kind of cool. I would like to go to Russia someday, but I don't see that in the next, you know, four or five years. Um, so, uh, you know, you might make plans. Well, maybe I got a 50% chance of going to Russia. I'm saving money. I want to go there. Okay. But for most of us, it's probably going to be close to zero. <laughs> Not many of us are going to go travel to Russia. Okay. Now, now we're looking for uh, another class type of problem here, another way of thinking about things. And this is all just kind of practical thinking. Using the following chart, it said, would you say that, fly, that flying in a plane or base jumping is more dangerous? Well, just from looking at the chart, using this chart, would you say, would you make a claim that flying in a plane or base jumping is more dangerous? Well, the truth is, base jumping has, if we look in 2016, base jumping only 31 people died in the world. And in flying in a plane, 258 people died in 2016. In 2017, 15 people died from base jumping and 59 died in a plane. And in 2018, 23 people died from base jumping and 561 died from flying in a plane. Well, just from this chart, using that chart and just some basic common sense, I would probably say that it's more dangerous to do base jumping, even though fewer people die from base jumping than flying. Just common knowledge tells us, and a little bit of reading newspapers and whatever, any, anything, not very many people base jump. <laughs> it's a dangerous, scary thing in most people's minds, and that's why not many people do it. They're jumping off of buildings or cliffs or big antennas or, you know, uh, uh, and from not, you know, and, and they have to open a parachute. That's what base jumping is. Uh, they open a parachute. They might have like a little wingsuit or something, but they open a parachute and that is not a very safe venture, uh, in most people's minds. And flying in a plane, while a lot more people die, we, I am well aware, a lot more people fly in planes than base jumping. So look, only it looks like in 2016, about less than 10 times as many people died in a plane than base jumping, right? Even if this was 300, if there was 10 times as many people flying in a, dying in plane crashes, I'd say, well, I know just from common knowledge that thousands and thousands and millions of people fly in planes every year, but not very many people base jump. So this is a much more dangerous venture in my mind. Now, if you're not sure about something, and you want more information, then you should do a little research. And I did a little research and I found out that um, a little history of air, air uh, plane flights is that back in 1926 and 1927, when there weren't many people 
flying, they only had 24 fatal commercial airline crashes um, that caused people, and, and further 16 in 1928, and they and uh, and 15 in 1921, killing 61 people. So not very many people died in plane crashes, even way back then when they weren't as safe. <laughs> That was the worst year on record at an accident rate of one for every one million miles flown. So based on current numbers, that would be 7,000 fatal accidents per year, which we don't have. For the 10-year period from 2002 to 2011, it says 0.6 fatal accidents happened per million flight miles globally. And that was down to, let's look, 22 fatalities per one million flights or uh, 12.7 million, uh, 2.7 per million hours flown. So it's very small, right? There's hardly any uh, fatalities compared to how many, many people fly. There it is. It says down here, we have 5.21 fatalities per million departures. That's hardly any. And now you look at base jumping, and it says that estimates of injury rate, there are... This is for injuries, but fatality rates of 0.04% per jump. 0.04 is 4 for every 10,000. 4 in every 10,000 jumps someone dies. That is, that is, and many people do it multiple times, so that's 1.7% per participant. Almost 2% of base jumpers die every year. That's a very high rate. I mean, you couldn't have airlines that are flying where 2% of their passengers each year are dying. It would be, you know, no one would fly if one in every 50. That means one in every 50 about. So that's uh, really pretty terrifying. So uh, these don't let the simple numbers, right? The 31 compared to 258, there's still a lot higher proportion of base jumpers dying. So which is more dangerous or more likely to cause death? Base jumping by a long, long way. Okay, enough. Well, that's all for this. We'll see you in the next video.